Uh, thank you. Good morning. I uh, will speak in English. Um, I apologize. No habla español. Um, I would like to talk today about... Uh, the ITHI project that I can the term driving is the identifier technology health indicator. So the mission of ICANN, and I'm going to quote because I want to say it's right, is to ensure the stable and secure operation of the internet's unique identifier system. So somebody one day, my boss came to me and says, how do we know how this system of unique identifier is doing? Is it doing better this year than it was doing last year? Are we doing a better job, essentially? Or is it getting worse? Is what we're doing having any impact on this? But to answer this question, we need to have a baseline of what it is and then track it year after year to see if it is doing better or doing worse. Hopefully, it will be doing better. So this project is to define a set of identifier, uh, sorry, a set of ident, I'm, sorry, not awake this morning, indicators that are going to track the health of these systems of identifiers. And the actual value of the indicator is somehow meaningless. If we have a number that is 720, is it good or bad? I don't really know. But if I understand that this indicator, the lower it is, the better we are. And this year we were at 720, next year we are at 690, we're doing better. As simple as that. So um, when we embark on a project like this, there are two ways of doing it. One way is to collect as much data as we have and try to figure out some sense from it. The other way is to, to we step back, look at the problem space, define where we think that we may have issues, try to derive a way to measure those issues, and then find the data. And that's what we are doing here. Uh, and what do we do when we have those measurements, those data, those metrics? Uh, the goal is to present those data to the community, and then to leave the uh, people who are making policies in the community to interpret this data and to use this data to educate them and to make more informed policy decisions. So ICANN, the organization, is not going to use this data to force anything on anybody. But this will be a tool that we want to provide to whoever is making policies, or in particular in the number community, those are the IR policy discussions, or in the name communities, those are the GNSO, CCNSO, and others to use those, this data to make uh, informed policy decisions. So, as in the INA function, we have three branches. One is on a name, one is on the numbers, and one is on protocol parameters. So we have different projects there. About the numbers, Alfredo is going to make a presentation later, so I'm not going to talk much about this. So I will skip directly to uh, names. So we have defined last year five problem areas on data accuracy, abuse, overhead traffic in the DNS root system, DNS leakage of names, things like corp, home, and mail that end up where we would not like it to be. And we have some identified misbehaviors in some resolvers. So uh, we may have new problems in the future, but right now that's a set we have. Uh, the process that we are using to uh, work on this project is to, once we will have the metric in place, we will use some data source that may or may not be public. Sometimes they will contain PII, privately identified information. Sometimes it will be data that we have under contract that we cannot share. But we are going to extract from this data something that is useful and something that uh, does not contain any PII, so that we will be able to share this on an aggregated way. And we are going to make some graphs about this, because sometimes graphs are much easier to understand, especially if we want to track a trend. And that's what we will publish. So for each of the different problem areas, we will define different raw data set, and then we will define what other published data set. 
So I'm going to go quickly over this. The slides will be available, and uh, I'm here again today. Uh, we may have some more conversation about this. This is work in progress. This is not cast in stone, so that's the current thinking where we are now. So about data accuracy, we are going to measure this indirectly, because at ICANN, we don't have access to the registrar database. We, contrary to IRs, who have actually access to the registration data. We don't. So the only thing we can do is to have indirect measurement, and we are going to look at the number of complaints that the ICANN department, the compliance department is receiving, and they are acting on. So that's what we call validated complaints. Uh, about abuse, there's a sister project in ICANN called DAR, um, which is the Domain Abuse Activity uh, Report. Uh, and we are essentially accumulating feeds from anti-abuse list, things like uh, uh, Spam House, Sobel, and others. And for each top-level domain and for each registrar, we're going to look how many of their domains are actually involved into some of those abuse. And we're going to split this into different categories. We don't want to have just an aggregate, that's the feedback we got from the community, but we want to go more into the specifics about spam, about phishing, about malware, and about botnet. And what we are observing already now is that the place where we see phishing and the place where we see spam and we see malware and botnet are not the same. It seems that the people who are doing those uh, abuse activities are very smart into where they are attacking. Uh, traffic on the root server, we have some measurement that shows that about 75% of the traffic to the root server is for domains that don't exist, should not even uh, have this traffic in the first place. And out of the remaining 25%, most of it is repeated queries. Even though in the DNS, there is a time to leave, a TTL, that says, don't ask me again for the next few hours, the next few days. People are asking sometimes every second, or even faster. So at the end of the day, there are only a few percent of queries that should have been sent in the first place. So that's okay, the infrastructure can handle this, but we want to make sure on how this is going to trend. If next year things, or the year after things start to deteriorate, then that's something we would like to know. While leakage, we talked about like things like corp, home, and mail, but those are not the only one. So we want to maintain essentially a list of those domain names that are not delegated, that are not reserved, and for which we see still some queries at the root. Um, resolve of misbehavior. We, we have anecdotal evidence that sometimes DNS resolvers are not returning the information they should. And that's actually the very reason why DNSSEC was invented, right? To make sure that you can sign the response and know that the information you get from DNS is correct. So we'd like to measure this. And the last one is about uh, protocol parameters. So the protocol parameters with regard to DNS are essentially things like the RR type, record type, like QADES, A, MX, uh, algorithm used for DNSSEC, uh, things used for TLSA. And all those parameters, we can track them by looking at how many queries are using them. So we can see which of those parameters are really being used and which are not. And that's give us a proxy to understand if some new technology, for example, TLSA, is actually being used or not. So right now, we are collecting this data from root server, but there's only a specific vintage point. So it's a call for action that I would like to make to all of you who are operating DNS resolvers. We would like to work with you to collect some data, make sure that the data is anonymized, make sure the data is abstracted, because we don't want to have anything that is PII. But we have some tools that help to extract only the aggregated information. And we would really like to, to come and, and work with you on this, to collect this data, to figure out through the DNS which technologies are being used. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if there's only one thing I would like to, you to remember is when we are collecting those indicators, the value of the indicator is not the most important. How this is trending over time is what is important. And this is a collaborative project. 
I'm really, really happy to see that the IR communities have really stepped up to the plate and been working with us and are proposing something, and then Alfredo is going to talk about this some more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alain.